This is Dr. Neil Burney. He lives in Bermuda, a stunning Atlantic island 640 miles east of North Carolina, USA. So now the, yeah. He spent the last 30 years practicing veterinary medicine, but now he's transferring his veterinary skills to help save, protect, and learn more about the incredible marine life of Bermuda's ocean. This is a completely wild shark. Alongside his dedicated ocean vet team are a number of scientists, yeah, this and here, marine this biologists, off the back fin. and specialist master divers, helping to perform a number of unique and dangerous procedures in a bid to safeguard critically important marine species. Together, the team will be fitting satellite tags to huge tiger sharks, saving precious green turtles, dissecting giant blue marlin and obtaining unique toxin samples from 45-ton migrating humpback whales. Yay! Whoa! My knees are like jello. Yes, man. This is Bermuda, home to Dr. Neil Burney, the ocean vet. In 2014, Neil Burney and his ocean vet team embarked on one of the most ambitious marine science projects of their lives. Over 131 days of filming, the team tagged, rescued, studied, sampled, swam with, and released some of the most breathtaking marine life in Bermuda's beautiful ocean. There's nothing better than to be out in the open working with live animals. It's just the best job in the world, right, Plugate? You got it, mate. He said, you got it, mate. We got it. In this special episode of Ocean Vet, we go behind the scenes of this unique, groundbreaking series. It's been an unbelievable first day's filming for this first series of Ocean Vet. I don't know if you can see that, hear that behind me. This is Bermuda, people, it's incredible. The cast and crew reveal their favorite moments, close calls, and toughest challenges. And we discovered just what it took for Neil Burney to become Bermuda's Ocean Vet. Straight into the ass, actually, in this position, it's perfect. Lift and go, drop the towel on his head. Talons head immediately. As we're traveling through the deep oceans, we've come across a pod of bottlenose dolphin, and they're actually riding the bow with us. So in the last few minutes, we've had three tiger sharks turn up in our chum slink. So we're going to get in the water and swim with them. We want you to love these sharks so you don't kill these sharks. This fish is going to swim, man. His dorsal's up. He's going to swim, I tell you. You never know what you're going to find here in the Bermuda Triangle. Cool. Be nice. When we get past this rock, we'll do it. Right, quickly. So, ocean vet date. Who knows? The small UK production team, consisting of Andrew Smith and Dan Radford, arrived in Bermuda on the 3rd of March, 2014. Working alongside Neil Burney, the ocean vet, Choi Ming, the series marine biologist, Dylan Ward, the second boat captain, Oscar Doyce, dive support, and Andrew Kirkpatrick on underwater camera. They set out on the monumental task of filming and completing 11 scientific marine projects. What's going on? It's about to take a boxing. The first part of the shoot was to obtain blubber samples for migrating humpback whales. The goal? To test for dangerous man-made toxins. I think the most challenging part of the whale episode has been uh, you never know on any one given day whether you're going to have whales that want to play or not. And when I say want to play, having whales that breathe at the surface two or three times and then go back down for 20 minutes is normal behavior for them. But it's no good for making a TV show, and it's certainly no good for trying to get biopsies from whales. I don't want to spook it. It's right here. Oh, my gosh. Repeatedly, the team took the tiny inflatable boat within touching distance of 50-ton whales. It's a very dangerous place to be, especially if you're carrying state-of-the-art camera equipment and harness to the boat. Filming a television series like Ocean Vet is just full of dangerous things. The first was yeah. filming the whale episode, um, which is the first episode that we shot. I'm strapped in in the back of the rib, and I've got a harness here which secures me to the front, and a harness at my back which secures me to the back. 
and we were surrounded by humpback whales. And these things are massive. They were particularly uh, engaged in what they were doing running after this female and we positioned the rib right in the middle of what was going on and there was whales jumping over here full breaches clean out of the water and there was other whales jumping clean out of the water and the whole scene was was escalating when when a whale starts to come to the surface they often blow uh, all of their air out just before they reach the surface and, and they breach the water color just went from dark blue to like a beautiful beautiful light blue and I, I mean there was swearing and everything I was sure that there was a you know 40 45 ton mammal that was about to eject itself out of the ocean five foot from the side of the boat and and land straight on us and you know I'm not being funny if that had have happened it would have undoubtedly have killed us all biopsy taken saw the hole in him as the arrow left and I'm just winding in. We are in amongst a pod of humpbacks who seem unconcerned by our presence. The production team also needed to collect underwater footage of the whales, particularly of any human interactions. Locating humpbacks to swim with was a challenge. But when the team did, it was to be an unforgettable and incredibly emotional experience. Capturing the footage was underwater cameraman Andrew Kirkpatrick. There was a moment when we were down there, and you'll probably see it in some of the footage, where Neil, um, it's almost like the meeting of two species. One of the, the humpback comes up to meet Neil, and it's almost like the sort of exchange and acknowledgement um, that, yes, I'm the above water person, and you're the below sea person. And it's just sort of like, it was almost like, hey, how you doing? And then, you know, the whale actually sings and then peels off. And it's just those little experiences that you just don't get in other animals. It really hit home, actually. It was just sort of like, wow, the, I had no idea that these creatures were like that. For the entire team, this single encounter was to become the most memorable of all their wild interactions. Kirkpatrick effortlessly framed the shot and perfectly captured the meeting of two worlds. Well, we've just had two migrating humpbacks come past. They look like player whales. It's what we've been looking for for the last few days. So we've got our main camera team in by the rib over there, tracking them underwater. I've just jumped in with a little DSLR. Amazing creatures, so graceful under the water and absolutely enormous. It's a really, really magical experience. Whew. What's the most moving experience that I've had in filming this? Well, it has to be going eye to eye with humpback whales. When you're 65 feet down, you're absolutely in their environment. And to have them roll up on you, roll over and look you in the eye, and then swim past you, roll over and look you with their other eye. Just, it's dancing with whales. It's fascinating. It was these initial encounters that forged the trust and respect that would ultimately carry the team through the rigorous and demanding filming schedule. Sharks are featured heavily in the series, some of which are considered the most dangerous shark species on the planet. However, for the ocean vet crew and the production team, it was other working environments that posed greater risks. I would say the most dangerous experience is, is probably diving and uh, running short on air on our single tank dives to 120 feet, and then coming up. Neil's dive skills were truly tested during the grouper episode, when the team were testing and working with a new tagging trap 120 feet under the ocean. After working to position the heavy trap, Neil found his air supply was much lower than he previously thought. Anybody that goes to 100 feet, doesn't matter how much experience you have, you, you gotta pay attention. You, you, you know, you gotta, you gotta be on your game. It's, it's not something you can take for granted because there are serious inherent dangers involved. Uh, particularly, is we're very far offshore as well. So medical, professional medical help is just that much further. As Neil was checking the tether line, he made a quick descent to the trap. During this descent, his spare regulator malfunctioned and released the remaining air in his tank. Neil quickly found himself in serious trouble. When they were coming up, they realized they were completely out of air. So we had to drop a second tank down to about 30 feet, where they sat for a bit, 
and did their decompression stop. And they had to breathe with another tank on a rope, which was not that safe. On top of that, Neil used what's called the comms mask. Now the comms mask encompasses your eyes and your mouth. So when you take your mask off, it is your air as well. So he had no mask and he had to put the second regulator in his mouth without any mask because he couldn't have used the comms mask. And that was a little dangerous, but it's what they had to do to get the shot done. And these guys risk their lives many times to get that shot or get that bit of science recorded. And we got it done. And with other, other crews, they might not push the limits like that, but because we did, we were able to get the information that we wanted. The Ocean Vet team and the production crew spent days studying and filming Bermuda's massive tiger sharks. This put Neil and his entire team, including the production crew, in the water with these massive predators. Although strict safety procedures were followed, a shark attack was always in the back of everyone's mind. When you're doing this, uh, the stick man thing, when you're, when you're protecting your cameraman uh, from you know, the potential that a shark comes up and bumps him or bites him or something like that, you have to be extremely diligent. One of the things that, that uh, I find a trip is if you're on land, all of us, we experience our environment pretty much in 2D. You never really think about depth. You never really think about something coming at you from above. Well, when you're in the ocean and you're actually in, in that blue water, you gotta be thinking 360 all the time. Like you gotta be thinking above, below, your awareness, like your spatial awareness. You're always spinning around. You're always uh, looking behind you, looking, looking below you for Andrew's sake and for your sake. Back in 2009, when the team began swimming with tiger sharks, their experience was limited. During one of Andrew Kirkpatrick's early dives, he witnessed a tiger shark coming very close to taking a bite from Will Tucker's leg, one of the safety team at the time. So obviously what we do is not a regular job, and no matter how much you prepare, there's always going to be an element of danger. Um, and the real danger for us is obviously being bitten by a shark. Um, and if that ever does happen, there's, there's really not much that you can do. Um, People have been like, hey, what sort of medical stuff do you have on board? And do you have these, you know, foam injectors and all that sort of stuff? And the bottom line is we're so far out there. If you were to be bitten on the arm or the leg, you're probably not going to make it. The team's distance from emergency medical attention was so great that even the smallest of accidents had the potential to become life-threatening injuries. But it was Neil's experience and knowledge of these sharks that helped keep the team safe. Other people would say, Neil, you had a tiger shark circling you repeatedly and coming up at you during that repeated circling. Surely that's an attack by a 12-foot tiger shark. That would be the most dangerous thing. And to that, I would say, I've got so used now to dealing with these big predators that at the moment, that doesn't frighten me at all. I'm adrenaline fueled, yes. I'm on edge, yes. But am I actually frightened? No. After nearly eight weeks working way out in the open ocean, there was a slight reprieve when filming started on the Eagle Ray episode. Okay, so we're deploying the net. We come so right in against the shoreline. We're deploying the net. I'm going to try and capture this ray. Yeah. Yeah. For the first time during the long shoot, the team found themselves working in the relative luxury of Bermuda's protected and simply stunning Harrington Sound. It was also the team's first opportunity to work with the legendary collector, Chris Fluke. I mean, eagle rays are probably one of the more challenging sort of animals that I had to catch with Ocean Vet because um, they're very smart. Uh, we completely underestimate them. They've got the biggest brain to body ratio of any fish or pretty much any animal on the planet, I believe. You know, anytime you've caught one before, just the way it acts, I can tell whether or not we've caught it before just because it will do the opposite of what a normal ray would, you would expect it to do in that situation. They can go underneath the net very fast. They can go over the top of the net. Um, they're faster than the boat. Um, so, you know, quite a challenging animal to deal with. Aerial videography was crucial in reducing some of these challenges and allowed the team to film and scan the locations to find the rays for tagging. So there's a couple of things that will help you spot eagle rays when it's flat light like this. The first is a good set of Polaroid glasses, but the second and my favorite is this. This is a gyro stabilized camera mounted on a quadcopter. Let's go.
modern technology. You've got to love it. This technology allowed the team to capture some remarkable footage of Eagle Ray behavior. Flying the drone was daredevil pilot Johnny Singleton. One of my favorite moments was when we were out filming the Eagle Rays, and we sent up the drone, and we couldn't believe our eyes. We saw three Eagle Rays uh, swimming close to the shoreline. Then it all happened. One of the Eagle Rays had chased the other one uh, and uh, bit onto the ear of the other one, attached, and uh, they went into to, uh, a spiral down into the depths. And um, I think that's the first time ever caught on camera from the air, eagle rays mating in the wild. The Ocean Vet team and the production crew had now witnessed, filmed, studied, and protected some of the world's most remarkable marine species. These shared experiences and the drive to complete such a colossal project had built a deep bond within the team, a bond that was about to be truly tested. The Bermuda Police Service can now confirm the death of 60-year-old Dr. Neil Burney, who died as a result of a marine incident that took place today a few minutes after 11 in the waters off of Horseshoe Bay. It appears that Dr. Neil Burney was free diving in the area. In one fell swoop, the team's world was turned upside down. I live about three minutes from where the boat was spotted, so I literally jumped in the car in, I was in my underwear, threw some clothes on, ran down, well, jumped in my car, drove down to the boat uh, where the boat was spotted, and I saw Neil's boat. And still at that moment, I thought, that's not Neil. I thought what had happened is he'd probably help somebody else who was in trouble, as we'd done several times in the past. Dan called me and said that he'd heard, he'd heard something uh, horrible had happened, but he couldn't confirm anything. And then about 30 seconds later, the, my, my phone rang and it was Choi. And as soon as I, as soon as I saw his name on, on the phone, um, you know, I knew something horrible uh, had happened. And I rushed back to the office um, and saw Dan. And by that time, John Manderson had confirmed it with us. Um, just a complete state uh, of, of numbness and, and shock. It was just awful. Neil died on November the 11th, just after 11 a.m., one week after filming completed. He was helping a friend dive up some damaged lobster pots in the deep ocean, and he got into trouble on his last dive and suffered a blackout and drowned. I think when I found out about the accident with Neil, it was just shock more than anything else. Um, Obviously, we'd spent the last three months doing some incredible things with some amazing species in the ocean, and some of them quite dangerous, you know. So I found it hard to compute that Neil had gone in the way that he'd gone, um, that it had been as a result of this, you know, quite innocent um, accident. Yeah, if I could, if I could tell Neil anything now I'd uh, I just tell him thanks for all the incredible experiences man thanks for thanks for including me in all these things thanks for answering your phone call like the 15th time but still like answering your phone and taking me out there dude just thank you so much okay, what am I? <sighs> all right I guess if I had another couple minutes with him, I just, I just, just want to sit there with him and talk and just know that, just let him know what a big part of my life he was. And just to say thank you. If I had uh, another opportunity to say something to Neil, um, Obviously, I'd, you know, I'd say I love you. I'd say thank you for the opportunity. Um, but I think more than anything, I'd say, I'd say we did it, mate. You know, we did it um, and we wrapped it. That's it. One week after Neil passed away, his body was transported out to sea 
where he would eventually be laid to rest. Over 200 boats followed Neil and the Ocean Vet team out into the deep. Aircraft flew high overhead and dropped flowers. Even the island's pets came to say goodbye. It was an incredible send-off for a remarkable man. A man loved by an entire country for a million different reasons. So Neil Burney was a, was a man who was contagious. Um, he was contagious about life. His energy and his spirit just swept everybody up in, uh, in what he was doing. Neil was such a laugh. I mean, such a laugh to be, to be around. He was, you know, he was, he was your best mate. He was everyone's best mate. I think Neil was probably the most incredible human I've ever met. He just had the zeal and passion for just like, just throwing all your cares to the wind and just going at it, you know? Sometimes it's sad, but sometimes, I would say more times it's unhappy because I got to know such an unbelievable guy and share so much time with him. And uh, I feel super lucky for that. He had more energy than the rest of us combined and he exceeded us by 20 to 30 years, the rest of the crew. Neil was never to be sort of caged, you needed to, he needed a little bit of direction, but it was the, it was the magical moments in Ocean Vet are the bits where he just is himself. Uh, there's a phrase that says, life is not about going to the grave with a well-preserved body, it's about skidding in sideways, burnt out, beat up, going, woo what a ride! That's it. My knees are like jello. Yes, man. So we're bringing the race straight up and into the anesthetic. So you can see the tag nicely, right at the dorsal fin, right at the top. So when he comes to the surface, that antenna is going to come out. 573 pounds of blue marlin. What a magnificent fish this is. I'm going to make a small incision in the skin once I've prepped it, and then I'm going to place this archival PSAT satellite tracking tag in this fish. Just going to put a little local anesthetic in just to numb the sensors that he has in his body wall right here. Love it. Best job in the world. Neil Burney was like a man who never grew up. And I mean that in the best sense. He had a, a childlike curiosity. He had a young man's um, um, edu energy and, and education. But I think generally with, with all of the Ocean Vet episodes, you just get caught up with, with Neil's spirit. And uh, to you and the uh, kudos and to the other people involved in the production, uh, it's a great reflection of who Neil Burney was. I hope that people will watch Ocean Vet and come away with some of the joy that I have for experiencing what is hidden beneath the surface of the ocean. Too many people go down to a beach and look out and they see the surface and they have no concept of the variety that exists beneath. And hopefully our show will do something to bring that to them and give them some of the joy that I've had in showing it. <laughs>